Hello and welcome. Welcome to uh, this webinar and guided meditation with uh, bringing in the energy of Venus with her conjunction with the sun. Okay, so uh, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. And so I'll be sharing just the structure of um, this session. Uh, first, we'll break it down and have some, you know, logical um, learning and understanding of, of Venus, of her as an archetype, a planetary archetype. So coming from an astrological insight and then also looking at it from the spiritual aspects as well where this Venus crowning, the conjunction of Venus and the sun, where this really sits with us as humanity as we ascend, as we shift through um, a real collective awakening of what we're going through at the moment. Um, and then talking just a little bit also about how reflective this is of, of humanity, uh, collectively what we are witnessing this year, 2020, what we're witnessing this year and how reflective Venus, her journey, her, her death and rebirth is, is really reflective of what it is that we're going through. Equally, I equally want to point out um, a little bit of your own personal journey. So um, perhaps even allowing yourself to, to look at your own birth chart to figure out where uh, this placement is happening within your chart and being able to use that uh, information to um, assist you in doing some of your own personal healing work. After we've had a bit of a class, a bit of a, you know, learning, watching, I've got a slideshow for you as well. Once you've watched that, I ask you to leave it all behind. <laughs> any words, any information we're gonna leave behind and then we're gonna enter into a guided meditation to experience the Venus energy, the Venus crowning, um, this conjunction of the Venus and the sun. And so as we go through the class, you'll get to understand what this energy represents. And then once you've allowed that information to assimilate into your system, the meditation will really assist in um, the, the more of the energetic, the intuitive quality of perceiving this information on a deep healing level. So sit back and enjoy this uh, webinar, this class about Venus and her energy that we're playing with at the moment. I'm just gonna share my screen with you here. Okay. All right, so Venus crowning. Um, the, what, we're, what we're talking about today is um, Venus and Sol, or Venus and the Sun in their conjunction uh, in Gemini on 3rd of June, 2020. And so this, um, this archetype, this energy that we get to play with, firstly, Venus and the sun in terms of an astrological movement, um, they, they do this dance and they do this play every 18 months or so. And uh, Venus goes into retrograde for about um, you know, 40, 40 days, 44 days this time around. Uh, and during this retrograde period, Venus comes from the evening star, so up high in the sky, descends down, joins with the sun. That's where she is crowned. That's where there is a rebirthing and then rises as our morning star. So that's the astrological or planetary movement that the myth and the stories and the energy that we get to play with, that's where it's coming from. And this is happening today on the 3rd of June, 2020. Um, Find your own time zone, but for me here in Portugal, for those in London, uh, the UK, Dublin, and Ireland, uh, it's happening at about 5.30, I believe. So, um, you know, it, it, the, the timing is really for um, geeks like myself that like to really tune in to that exact moment, but we're already feeling it. So it's the energy that you get to play with. Um, okay. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by opening up the space um, because we're calling in quite a, a big energy here. I do want to still hold it as a sacred space for you to experience. Um, with, 
with ceremony, with um, creating this etheric space, because I'm not with you and I'm physically with, with you, uh, I, what I ask you to do is create that nice little sacred space where you are undisturbed, where you uh, allow yourself to invoke the elements. Whether you have laid out an altar with you, with your crystals, with a candle, some incense, um, some roses, uh, something like that to, to really help you ground into this sacred moment, wonderful. I ask you to call upon that. If not, you know what? All of these elements are existing within you, so I will guide you to breathe that um, into your space now. For those of you that normally journey with me and we drink cacao together, I invite you to drink your cacao as I open this sacred space uh, together or herbal tea or um, anything like that, uh, your, your ceremonial um, elixir of choice. So enjoy. Sit in a comfortable position, allow your spine to be upright and just allow yourself to sink into a clear and open space. This clear open space is so that we can really assimilate this information for our highest good. Allowing this information to deeply access uh, the parts of our system that allow us to transform, to heal, to shift with energy on both mental, emotional, physical, and energetic levels. This is what we're calling forward now. As we open up this space, we call upon four directions. Taking a full deep breath, We acknowledge the element of air as we breathe. Listen to the sound and the quality of your breath. As we call upon the element of air, we are reminded uh, of the focus of our mind, the clarity of our thoughts, the purity of our perception. We invite this into this space and we call upon the winged beings, the beings of the air element, the guardians of the air element to come and surround you now in a sacred circle. And with your next full deep breath, acknowledging and calling upon the element of fire, fire coming from the south, this beautiful bright light, igniting the vitality within you, setting fire to your heart, the fire of your spirit. We allow this beautiful vitality, this light to infuse within and around you, calling upon the beings of the fire, to surround you now with a beautiful sacred flame of purification and transformation, keeping your safe space safe and allowing you to really fully infuse yourself in all of the beautiful wisdom that is shared with your heart through this space now. And with your next full deep breath, acknowledge and breathe deep into the element of water, calling upon the direction of the west, taking in this element of water, allowing the waters to run clear for your emotions to guide you on a clear and easy path of least resistance. As we breathe in water to our bodies, we awaken our cellular memory so that they can be infused with the wisdom that is imparted to you. So on some level, shape or form, your body recognizes this information and will assimilate it into your body in the time that's right for you, even if that is at dream time. Call upon the water beings to surround us now in the sacred circle and keep you safe as you Initiate and learn all about this Venusian quality. With your next full deep breath, acknowledging and breathing into the element of earth, connecting to the direction in the north, grounding this information into your physical form, into this land, into the structures that you hold in your reality. We allow this information to be assimilated into your body for its highest purpose of healing, of integration. We call upon the beings of inner earth, our ancestors, to surround us in a sacred circle, allowing for this space to be held in this present moment now.
as you enter into your heart space at the very center of these four corners, these four quarters. Breathe deep and listen to the sound of your breath, the quality of the breath that you breathe into your body. And as you enter into the center of your heart, feel the pulse of your heart beat throughout your body. This vital force is upholding you in this present moment, an unseen force that enlightens you, that gifts you this opportunity of life. And as you breathe deeply with your next exhale, ground this beautiful consciousness from your heart center, ground it all the way down through your body, through the layers of the earth beneath you, the layers of the building that you are sitting within. Breathe it all the way down as you ground and anchor your energy into this present moment, aligning yourself with the heart of Gaia. As you anchor and connect in with the heart of Gaia, allow yourself to be present, be held by her nurturing force. As you start to inhale deeply, allow her energy, the Gaia consciousness to rise all the way up through the earth, breathing it all the way up in through the soles of your feet, all the way up the length of your spine, connecting to your heart center. Allow your breath to rise lengthening the back of your neck, the top of your head. And with your next full deep exhale, allow your breath to push your force, this beautiful heart light that you exist within. Breathe it and reach it all the way up through your crown. Reach it as high as you can perceive. And see these cords, these tendrils, just like the roots that you have grounded into the earth. See these tendrils of energy reaching all the way up like branches of a tree to connect you to the heart of source. To the creator heart of all that is. Allow yourself to be infused with this wonderfully high perception, your higher mind, your higher aspects. And when you start to breathe, inhale deeply as you draw this beautiful force, this quality of energy, breathing it all the way back down in through your crown and allowing it to wrap around your entire body. Every cell in your body is held in this beautiful space. And you share that beautiful source connection all the way back down to Gaia. And from Gaia, she reaches all the way up, connecting to heart source. You've created a beautiful portal of energy with your vessel, your body in the center. All you need to do is focus on your breath to remind yourself of this powerful position that you are in. Taking your last few deep breaths, holding this space sacred for you, opening your third eye, your clairsentient ability to feel, to hear, to know all that it is that you need to receive through this transmission, through this lesson, through this offering that I share with you today. Now when you feel ready, Slowly blinking open through your eyes, going back into this space. Thank you. Okay. We'll just go back to speak to Heather. So just to talk about the Venus archetype, to comprehend what Venus means, okay? And you don't have to be up on your um, astrology knowledge here. So this is just to play with your thought process. If I'm to say Venus as an archetype, what does that conjure up in your mind? 
what sort of imagery does that bring up for you? And so a lot of the time, Venus is considered, you know, the, um, the maiden, the Aphrodite, the romantic and uh, Romanesque kind of versions and qualities of love and um, harmony and kindness. And for sure, that is a big part of the Venusian archetype. Um, when we look from an astrological point of view, when we look at archetypes, there is always a high and a low vibration or version of um, the energy. That's the case with every energy. There's a high, a low, a higher consciousness, um, and another variation of consciousness that engages differently as well. Uh, one is not greater than the other. Both exist hand in hand together. Uh, but our focus is often to try and achieve the higher vibrations, the higher aspects of archetypal energy so that we can really infuse and enlighten and raise our own vibration with this energy. Um, so Venus, uh, the archetype, connects to love. Yes, love from a romantic and relationship perspective for sure, but also love from a, a higher love unconditional love, a compassionate love that sees, sees oneself in all things. Um, so if you think about the statement namaste, the hands come together at the heart center and you bow. You're bowing to acknowledge that you see the light in somebody else that is equally reflected within you. And there is this beautiful reflection moment of pure love shared amongst you when you greet each other. And so that is a wonderful way of, of, of also embodying what this Venus archetype is, that it recognizes there is a connection, a relationship to everything, everything, not just like your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, your friends, everything. You are connected to everything. There is a relationship to everything. And everything shares that same love-light connection. And so sharing that love-light connection is entering into a heart space, into a pure love heart space. And that is where we find our Venusian energy, that true home of the sacred heart. Um, of course, it, it connects to allure and attraction and that hunger, that desire that allows you to bring about these loving connections, allows you to bring about and manifest loving connections. Um, it allows you to be creative, to share your flair, your style, to be the um, perceiver, to see that there is beauty in everything so that you are the, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So how you perceive it is how you look through your Venusian eye, your sacred heart, you perceive beauty in all things, in all different ways, in its light, in its dark aspects. Uh, it, of course, connects to our tastes, our values, art, artistic uh, ways. And it connects to balance and harmony. Uh, if we were to look at it, you know, linking it to the Libran energy from Libra and the Zodiac, it is that same quality where you're looking at um, balance, harmony, justice. That is all coming forward for this Venusian, uh, arc in this Venusian archetype that is infused within this planetary consciousness, uh, self-worth and um, self-value is a big part of the Venusian archetype as well. And from that place of self-worth and self-value, you have heartfulness um, and you really allow yourself to connect on a much higher level. You comprehend your own self-worth, therefore you're not depleting of your energy. Yet at the same time, as you hold your own self-worth, you see that reflection in so many others and you give yourself of service to others because you are coming from a heart-centered space. Of course, there are some lower variations or vibrations of the Venusian archetype. Um, very much uh, swirling around the idea of greed, gluttony, vanity, sloth and lust, um, which we can really compare to the seven deadly sins. Um, something that my, uh, my astrology teacher, Andrew Smith, he really brought to light in that this is something that has been almost poured upon the Venusian archetype that exists in all of us. So even though I may refer to it sometimes as a very divine feminine aspect, it exists in both 
men and women. It is that the that archetype, that energy, that sacred heart to be in that beautiful holding space, the yin, the divine feminine space, is like as if it has been tarnished and given a bad name so that anytime you enter into spaces like that or allow yourself to embody that Venusian quality that you feel bad, that you feel shame and guilt and that, um, and that also it's projected upon you. Okay. So that is, um, they are some of the very atypical uh, archetypes of the Venusian energy. And so some, most of those words are going to conjure up your own emotional attachments, your own um, mental thought processes around it as well. Um, I want to also bring light to the symbolism of what Venus is. So Venus is very much about bringing spirit into matter. Um, Venus has on more of a esoteric or spiritual uh, level, always been connected to a Christ consciousness, um, the sacred heart, the ability to bring light down from spirit somewhere an unseen space and bring it into matter. Um, and so that is very much what we are all learning to do, learning to become this enlightened spiritual being within a body, within matter. So um, most people, I, I think, nowadays can uh, align themselves with this way of thinking in some, some way, shape or form, that we are an energetic being. If I remove the word spiritual, that might help some people's minds, but energetic, we are energetic. There's something about us that we cannot quantify, but that we are a vital force, energetic force housed within a vessel, a body. And that our energy, whether that is our emotions, our thoughts, our perceptions, they are unseen energetics they engage our intuition our extrasensory perception they engage with the world around us so we are a spiritual being embodied in matter we are here to awaken that energy to really enlighten that heart essence that pure heart sacred heart the christ consciousness of being a crystalline being. Crystalline being is a being whose body, whose physical DNA structural body is infused with so much light it is crystalline. Okay, that is what we are. We are a crystalline being, a Christed being. And it is through this Venusian quality, this Venusian archetype, that this energy then comes into play with us. And so some of the other stories, I'll probably get into some of these stories a little bit more, is uh, Lucifer being the light bearer. And so this would be a good myth or story that I'm sure most people have heard of, but how, again, a reminder that this has been tainted, tarnished, and turned into the story of the devil. Um, Lucifer is the ancient name for the morning star of Venus, the aspect of Venus, that is the morning star, the light bearer. And so the light bearer is in it, it rises before the sun, it brings light to earth, spirit into matter. And so um, Venus in the night sky or the morning, less in the morning, um, but in the night sky, when you see Venus as a star in the, in the sky, it is the third brightest light in the sky after the sun and the moon. Um, so pretty, pretty big deal. <laughs> um, and then we've also got the myth in Anna and Ishtar. I've been sharing a lot of this on my Instagram, on my website and on YouTube. Um, I would highly recommend checking out that myth. It really, I'm someone who loves to tell stories or at least um, that's how I comprehend things so much more is that when I can hear it through story form, you can see how it plays at large with humanity, how the collective energy moves in that story form but then equally you can take that story form and apply it to your own personal journey or attach your own processing into this story form so i really highly recommend looking up the the myth of inanna or ishtar um, from other sources or from my own you'll find it on my website on my blog 
Um, also, in Greek mythology, uh, the, the myth of Inanna and Ishtar, that was this powerful force, this goddess of life and creation, this queen of um, the living and heaven on earth. It was this incredible force that even though it was all powerful, was also all giving. And it had both yin and yang qualities to it. There wasn't this like, when the Greek mythology came about, it's like, oh, this beautiful Venusian um, demure virgin arises out from the froth of the sea. Beautiful myth. Nevertheless, I do love the Venus Greek myth, but it really knocks any of the power that she held or it turns it into a very, very soft version of the force that Venus is. And that's something I really want to share with you today. But yes, that, that archetype, that virgin, that, that maiden energy exists within the Venusian energy, but that is not all of it. Um, and that through the Greek mythology, along came a lot of the patriarchal systems at the same time. And through that, those yang characteristics were lost and the, you know, kind of the seven deadly sins were really portrayed as wrong and bad. And that this was very much part of Venus. <laughs> These were qualities that Venus offered. And so um, we really see how her archetype was totally ripped to shreds. And even though a lot of women, because through their feminine figure and body, would have experienced more of the uh, tarnishing um, and ridicule of this type of energy. Their power was taken from them. This does not limit it to just women. This is a quality of your spiritual essence was made shameful. And the sense of power was taken from you and there was some sort of controlling force imposed upon you. And this is again, uh, once that imbalance is, um, once an imbalance is made, then there is injustice, injustices. And this is what we're witnessing in today's world. Uh, this week alone, we are witnessing a massive global collective humanitarian injustice that is going on. And this is why it's so reflective of the Venusian archetype. This is why it's coming to light now because this is the type of energy that is asking to finally die, leave those old patterns behind and be reborn anew, a new world reborn with the light returning to earth as true humanitarian cells. We are each a cell in the body of humanity. And that is what we are asking to be rebirthed so that our sacred heart can be reunited within our own vessels. So our Christ consciousness, our higher spiritual aspects can be embodied within each of us and this brings forth a new reality a higher version a greater perception of our reality can be born as more and more of us consciously move through this energy and allow for a great humanitarian shift and awakening to happen so again i do really want to offer a heartfelt thanks to the guidance that I've gotten from my teacher, Andrew Smith and Karen Morgan, both of them through the Blue Rose Astrology School. They have been mentors for years with me and uh, I have thoroughly, I love journeying with their classes and have been hugely inspired by their love and their um, knowledge that they share about the Venusian energy. I highly recommend you check them out as well. I just wanna stop and take a moment to say thank you. And so then we have, my computer is acting nice and slow. There we go. So Venus crowning as part of the collective shift for ascension. Very similar to what I've been saying so far. Um, we can see whether you follow again, whether you follow esoteric, spiritual, ascension or astrological um, patterns, and movements, you do not need to comprehend it to know that our collective humanity is going through a huge shift this year. 2020 has been a big year. It's a big reset button. 
And we are witnessing that on all our relative, personal, um, individual, and collective variations of our reality. Our reality is getting a, if we look at it, reality has been put into little boxes and we label everything. We love labeling everything. And all these labels have done nothing but, um, have done nothing but, uh, oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, they putting things into boxes and labels have done nothing but reduce our energy into boxes. We are not containable in a box. We are not limited to a label. We are so much more than a label. And that is what is being torn down and reconstructed this year. So that is what I mean by that. This Venus crowning is a huge part to play in the collective shift that is going on in 2020, a big grand reset. Um, those of you that have joined me before, I've had a few other uh, webinars and workshops around the Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter conjunction that is at play this year. And so that's having a big, big role to play in a um, global shift, you know, whether that is a deconstruction of our society, political governments, uh, our health system, all of this is getting, uh, getting a good spring clean, a good rebirthing. Um, but equally those that are, you know, consciously moving with this, uh, again, like I say, those that are moving with this from an energetic, astrological, ascension or spiritual perspective, um, you can really start to see how this is playing out on so many levels, not just in kind of a ethereal, non-palpable thing. We're really seeing this um, play out in our reality now. Uh, the actual crowning would be considered the rebirth of our, the heart of humanity. Um, we go through the Venus retrograde every 18 months and it goes through the different, um, it's different zodiac patterns as well. Um, but this particular cycle, in Gemini links to 2012 and 2004, but 2012 is say it's the last time Venus uh, had its retrograde in Gemini. And I don't know, maybe I just speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other very conscious um, woke beings that uh, remember 2012 being a big year of some sort of awakening whether they were conscious of it in that exact moment or at the even moment of the Venus retrograde or not, 2012 is known as a big year of like something changed. Uh, whether you look at it from the Mayan calendar, it ended then, there was um, a lot of other different things that just kind of something shifted then. But when Venus went into retrograde, then it planted a seed that has come to fruition now in 2020. And it is now time for whatever came to light then to die and be rebirthed, upgraded, perception to be highlighted. Um, I'll go a little bit more into the astrological breakdown of the Gemini perception and um, communication that we get to experience. But very much uh, the Venus crowning is part of our, the heart of humanity getting rebirthed. Um, also looking at it, Venus is in front. So if we have the sun and then Venus and, um, that, and then earth, <laughs> the sun is shining through the lens of Venus as it enters its light into earth. So if you think about it, Venus is given this beautiful crown, this halo of light, of golden light around her, uh, around this planetary consciousness. And that is what is shone down onto earth. Um, so it's a beautiful crowning uh, of this consciousness, of this energetic consciousness, of this planetary consciousness that we get to play with. Um, and so that is what's coming up at the moment, part of our collective shift. And so then, we go into the more astrological insight here. So, Again, a lot of this is taken from, uh, from the inspiration and the sharings that Andrew shared with us through the Blue Rose. Um, so I really do appreciate all of his guidance and offering. When we look at Venus at 13 degrees Gemini, 
we're looking at uh, its placement in the zodiac map, okay? Let's just look at Gemini as an energy. Gemini is mutable air, mutable air, the exchange of breath, right? And this continues. Ever present, this exchange of sacred breath is always there. Um, and that is what we do uh, to keep ourselves in movement, alive, engaging. Um, but if we think about it, then there's also air represents our mind, our thoughts, our, uh, yeah, that kind of more mental, logical processing. So if we break that down, let's look at where it rules in our body, and that's our nervous system. The biggest communication center in our system is the nervous system. And it's this channel, two-way channel of energy that goes between our senses, our entire body, every single organ, every nerve ending in the body, feeds information into the spinal column, into the nervous system that channels back up, up to the brain, sends signals to the brain, the brain sends its response back out to the various functions. So again, it's the two-way movement of communication within our bodies, from mind to, um, to movement, or from our spirit, because we're perceptive of more things than just physical, so we're perceptive of feeling, of something unseen, of spirit, and again, that feeds it into our system and then we engage with it back out. So it's always about exchange and sharing of energy. Breath being the easiest thing, the easiest concept to attach yourself to. Listening, hearing, perceiving, sharing, expressing, putting out. Both of these qualities are a big part of the Gemini energy, the messenger, the sacred messenger. So you come in, you perceive your message, what it is that you are here to share, and then it is up to you to put it out. Once you put it out, your reality engages with you. You hear, you take on board how you are engaging with the world, how the world is engaging with you. It comes in and it forms another wave of going back out and engaging again. And so this constant exchange of who you are, exchanging with your reality from spirit to matter, this is constantly moving through you. So this Gemini energy is actually always going through you. I'm obviously applying it with the archetype of Venus as well to make it a little bit more potent. Um, I also see that with, with a lot of the air uh, signs, um, a little bit more so, you know, an Aquarian type of energy, um, but also equally available within the Gemini energy is this electromagnetic current. If you think of your nervous system, there is an electromagnetic current of feedback going on. So that is the energy that we get to play with as well um, as Venus is crowning at 13 degrees Gemini. The crowning or the conjunction, just to put like a wording around it, I've already mentioned like that holy halo. If you think to any of the uh, religious scriptures or depictions within um, art, the Renaissance art, and very even Egyptian artwork and things like that, there's this halo. There's this like, these rays of light that exist around the crown of beings, of people. And that is very much this crowning, the ability to be enlightened. And so when Venus is crowned, when Venus and the sun conjoin, there is an enlightenment that happens. An upgrade of perception happens. And this sense of enlightenment alters and shifts that perspective. Okay. So just to break it down, our perception is Gemini, our nervous system, our breath and how we engage. That's very Gemini. Venus, our heart consciousness, our sacred heart. And conjoining with the sun, crowning with the sun, there is this halo of golden light that is infused into both our perception and our Christ consciousness at our sacred heart. There is a beautiful union of both mind and heart, of sacred heart into matter. How we comprehend 
our divinity, our sovereignty. We're being crowned. We're getting an opportunity to be crowned. I won't even go into the pun that it attaches itself to the um, beautiful experience that we had in lockdown this year. Crown, okay? We are being crowned this year. And this is wonderfully happening um, uh, just two days before the eclipse season really kicks off and we have our first partial lunar eclipse on Friday in two days time, followed by our solar, annular solar eclipse um, at the solstice. So there is a big amount of crowning going on and uh, rebirthing of, of an unseen energy, of the yin energy, of the Holy Spirit, of the divine feminine. Again, I'm hating the fact that I have to label this, <laughs> but I'm talking to you. So I must put words on it. I must confine it into words and into labels, into boxes. I'm personally uh, conflicted over the wording because I don't want to say divine feminine because I don't want uh, masculine, those that are quite uh, opposed to the fact, oh, well, I'm a man. It's like, yes, you're a man. You also have divine feminine energy within you. Okay, so I say unseen energy because we are, our body is yang. It's seen, it does, it moves, it's active. The unseen energy is our spirit. That is the yin energy. And so that yin, divine feminine, Holy Spirit, whatever, again, word you want to put on it, that's the quality of energy I am talking about. That essence is what is being rebirthed in both the Venusian uh, conjunction, but equally in the eclipses. It's where the solar energy, which is yang, the light, is eclipsed <laughs> by another energy. So we've got the sun, Venus comes in front of it. Venus is the spirit. So and again, if we just take it, an unseen energy, a yin force, eclipsing in front of yang, light force. Therefore, we're getting this beautifully infused light into the unseen force, infused into us here on earth. And then join me for my other <laughs> workshops on the eclipses, I'll go into those uh, particular archetypes and energies that we're experiencing um, as the next few weeks unfold. But you understand what I mean, hopefully, when I label it as Holy Spirit. I come from an Irish Catholic background. And so when I first was given the Holy Spirit as a word to use, I was like, oh God, I can't use that. There are so many people that would absolutely, totally put me off straight away. They'd be, you know, they'd run out the door kind of laughing at me. But the more I sat with the quality and I sat with it as, yes, it's divine feminine. Yes, it's Holy Spirit, okay. It's yin, okay. It's unseen. It's an unseen vital force that has been suppressed, hidden, misused, mistreated. This force exists in every single being. And we can see how this suppression is now coming to light because the light force is shining into this yin unseen force that now needs to be rebirthed. The old ways need to die and the new ways need to be reborn. So you see where I'm going with this and I think so potent this week is what is being played out in the media, social media as well. And again, I want to try and keep this just at the Venusian conjunction, but it is so reflective of what is going on in our real world at play at the moment. So some of the questions that Andrew has shared um, that I have put in here, soul unity, love, Connecting with others, all living beings and inanimate objects. How do you express in your actions that love, that sacred love that exists between you? Do you hear love in the sounds around you and in the words of others? Doesn't matter what they're saying. Can you hear their expression of love? 
higher love being expressed? Do you breathe love into your words, into your thoughts that feed your own body and that sh you share your ideas with others? Can you infuse that higher consciousness of love into that sharing expression? And do you open your eyes to witnessing love in all its forms? Okay, open your eye, your third eye. There is a huge amount of alteration of perception. When we go into this uh, vault of union, and I'm, I'm gonna refer back to the myth that I've been sharing. So when Inanna, enters into the vault, the throne room of Arishkagal. And Inanna dies and Arishkagal goes into labor, childbirth. There's a role reversal of the queen of, of, of creation and then the queen of death coming together. The queen of life dies and the queen of death gives birth. There's this role reversal because there is a fusion in this throne room, in this vault where both aspects, light and dark, dark and light, whatever it is, are one. This oneness, this unity, is the point of enlightenment. It's blinding. You're not supposed to put a word on it. <laughs> you're not supposed to really be able to, not, not comprehend it, but you're not it's, not, it's not a thing that you do. It's a thing that you be. And so when you become, that space of total divine union. You allow all that you attached worth to, all that you attached life and light to, you let it die, you surrender, you let it be slaughtered, whichever way you want to perceive the myth, or equally the archetype at play here. You equally surrender to the tremendous power that your shadow aspect has, that the dark side of you has that the suppressed side of you has, because when the suppressed side of you shows its true power, that is where life is created from. That is the cosmic heart of darkness. Dark matter is where all things are born from. Dark matter, I'm not a physicist, so I'm not going to get too much into that, but that is what holds our entire universe. That energy is from which the womb, the cosmic womb, the physical womb gives light, gives life, crowns, births anew. And then from that birthing of anew, a being of light is born and rises. But the dark, the shadow, the yin, the unseen remains holding space. Arishkagal remains in or Kala, or in the underworld, she surrenders herself and she resigns to be the keeper of this underworld. So that in Anna, her daughter, her, the, the being that she has given the waters of life to, can rise and be the bearer of light up unto to earth, to bring light into earth. So that is um, where we're going with the Venusian energy with Venusian energy in Gemini uh, and aligning it with the myth. Equally, aligning uh, this Venusian energy with the Christ consciousness and the Lucifer story, um, as I've mentioned already, it's the rebirth of the heart. If you know many uh, different religious uh, scriptures, um, I would highly recommend you just start to look at patterns numbers 40 days who spends 40 days and returns enlightened not just jesus by the way <laughs> there are many many stories where there is a 40-day period where uh, different deities different ascended masters different beings go on a journey go on a process and on this process like in anna like ishtar 40 days, there's a full descent and rise of this energy where they die. But in the process, in the center of this, so we're now at the center point of this retrograde period, of this 40-day period, we have surrendered 
to all that needs to die. And we become enlightened, crowned, and we rise. We rise with that awakened heart, with that awakened third eye. And so that is the, the spiritual realization that happens in this, um, in this variation of energy. To really comprehend myth and story, and I love myth and story, I would, there's part of me that would much rather just allude to the lovely stories and not really go behind the stories. When you go behind the stories, though, you start to see how we as a consciousness are dancing in, we are forever dancing in spirals and variations of the exact same thing playing out. It is the planetary consciousness, this is the cosmic consciousness that spirals. And that within that, we are a fragment of energy, of consciousness that experiences its little short lives within the grand spirals. And um, we just so happen to be in human form as we get to go through a huge cosmic shift, not just a humanitarian shift. We are shifting and awakening as we all go through a spiritual shift, a cosmic shift, something on a much greater level than our wonderful lives here on earth, our little tiny lives here on earth. Take yourself out of here, <laughs> if you can, and realize that you are part of a much bigger picture, that you are the bigger picture, but that you have a moment, a little life, to experience one variation of everything that's spinning at this very moment in time. And your fractal, my fractal, your neighbor's fractal, your child, your partner, we're all fragments of the one same light. We're all cells in the one body. As we are all cells in the one body, we all move as one body through this shift. Unseen mist, unseen breath, electromagnetic energy that infuses and communicates with our entire nervous system, our system as the one body. And as this one body of humanity shifts, we are shifting with the collective, we are shifting with the cosmic collective. Now the eyes, the cells in the eyes, the cells in the fingertips, they're going to perceive this movement, this shift in a very different way than the cells that are inside in the stomach, providing a, a vital process for, the, for the, the body, not the human body, but the collective body. The, the cells that exist in the hips, the thighs, the shoulder blades, they're functioning so that the body can move, but maybe they're not so bothered by comprehending where they're going or, needing to talk about it, needing to hear the whole story. They're not the cells in the fingertips, the ears, the eyes, the mouth. And I share that metaphor <laughs> to understand the spiritual realization that we're going through. We all move as one, but we are all different and unique, and that is okay. It is okay to be different and, and unique. And it is through this united force of appreciation of every cell in your body, of understanding that from your heart, you see the heart of somebody else and you realize, thank you, I see you. And when you realize and appreciate and value that connection to that other being, to that reflection of another part of who you are, you are truly uniting in your Christ consciousness. You start to see you in everything. No, it's not an exact mirror reflection. That other person is reflecting another aspect of all that you are. How beautiful is that? And we start to appreciate differences. We start to appreciate 
We appreciate that people, as in each human now, are moving at a different rate of consciousness. There are ripples that are on the forefront that have already hit the shore. There are ripples that are still back at that very first droplet. And they will reach the shore at one point. But when we truly enter into Christ consciousness, heart-centered, sacred, divine union, we appreciate everything that we engage with, every single relationship, whether that is with a tree, the sky, the sea, a child, an adult, a person we don't like, a person we do like, a collective we appreciate, a collective we do not value. We stop we enter into the heart space and we start to realize how we are moving as one force. Okay, before I waver off there. <laughs> the Christ consciousness or Christ himself. Uh, and Christ consciousness is infused in both Yeshua, uh, Mary Magdalene, Buddha consciousness, Krishna, uh, Mohammed, um, Moses. There are, you know, I'm not so up to date on my religious scriptures as to each individual that embody the Christ consciousness. What I do know is that there are multiple people who have been ascended masters who have been human beings, who have achieved heart consciousness enlightenment to become ascended masters that walked on this plane of existence, that walked on earth. It is said that those beings that held the quality of Christ consciousness are descendants of the consciousness of Venus. The Venus consciousness is sacred heart, sacred divine union. Then we get to the Lucifer, the light bearer. Yes. The Lucifer, the light bearer consciousness was demonized and was made to become the devil. Why? <laughs> because anyone who uttered that name, anyone who, who connected to that Luciferian way was suddenly deemed a demon, a bad person. Don't get me wrong, there are multiple people that have corrupted something of pure light and used those words, those labels for corruption so that they are not accessible for those that want to use them to hold a higher vibrational heart-centered space. Because now, our consciousness, our conditioning, our mind, perceives the word Lucifer or Luciferian as negative, as occult, sacrificial blood rituals. It is absolutely bastardized. The true meaning of Christ consciousness, of light being born to earth and rising the consciousness, raising the consciousness of earth. So that's why I hate labels. Absolutely ruins the essence of what everything is. Light consciousness, Christ consciousness, divine spirit, Holy Spirit, divine feminine, yin, unseen energy, whatever. It is a oneness. It is an invisible force of unity that when we become one, we truly feel this heart consciousness. Most people in humanity, fair enough, we experience it for just momentary experiences and they're really heart uplifting and incredible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time it's our practice to remain in that heart consciousness space. But we are learning as a collective consciousness, the more and more of us that shift with this sacred heart union, we shift and move through and we become more, we breathe more of this Christ consciousness, of this divine 
holy spirit unseen yin energy divine union we bring it into our reality and it now becomes the new reality the new earth the new world that we will start to collectively engage on okay so let's pause let's breathe let's breathe in the venusian light now And every once in a while, a little pause and a good deep breath goes a long way <laughs> to recentering in that heart space. So we're coming to a close um, with the more logical class and, and webinar style of this. Sorry, that photo isn't working there. Um, just briefly, though, to locate Venus in your own chart. Um, and then Venus at 13 degrees Gemini in your chart. Um, if you're roughly aware of astrology and your natal chart already, what you would do is firstly, you would find where your own Venus is and look at its quality, its zodiac sign, um, its placement, um, the house system, its aspects, you know, whatever it's connected to in the conversations and dialogue it makes in other areas of your chart. And so really sit with that Venusian quality. That's what you are here to share, that Venusian light. So be with that. You could just, you don't even have to really know your chart. You could just sit down and say, I'm going to breathe in my own Venus. <laughs> and just breathe in that essence. Pause, breathe. Call in your Venusian light. And then if you wanted to sit with... Um, Venus at 13 degrees Gemini, again, looking at your own map, your chart, your natal chart, birth chart. You would look at that, you would find 13 degrees Gemini in the zodiac sign of Gemini, you go to the 13th degree. And you would see if it sits close to any other planet, node or um, angle in your chart. And just Again, you'd kind of need to have a rough idea of, of astrology to understand what it's triggering. If it's sitting on a planet, um, I would look into that, the archetype or the energetic qualities of each of those, the planet or the node or the angle or whatever, the midpoint. I would really look at, at the midpoints, but again, that's going a little bit deep in terms of your astrological comprehension. Um, and then from there, that is the actual thing that's being reborn dying and reborn in this Venus conjunction. So you look at that energy. Um, that's if you know your chart. If you don't know your chart, hey, I'm an astrologer. <laughs> I would love to work with you. Now that um, Montessori is back open, I can go back to work and uh, I'm taking on bookings again for astrology readings. So definitely get in touch with me and I would be more than happy to sit with you and your chart and share some astrological insights to assist you in decoding your energy, not just on an astrological perspective, but I really do go into more of the esoteric uh, way of using your chart to navigate through this beautiful play of energy, the macrocosmic and the personal that we get to play with. So um, definitely reach out to me. I've got my email there, danielle at 12thspace.com. You can find me on Instagram as well at 12th space. So um, if there are any questions, please do get in touch. I really would love to hear of um, any other questions uh, that you would like to ask. I've connected with um, my tribe here in the Algarve and we've had some really beautiful conversations around the essence of, of um, of Venus and what it is bringing up in our reality at this moment in time, um, and particularly this week. And I've, I've, I, uh, I apologize if I've gotten too heated, but at the same time, 
I don't apologize. What we're going through, what we're moving through at this moment in time is um, huge in terms of what it is that we're getting to experience and play. And with Venus dying, there are qualities of us, our, our individual self being shed and allowing those qualities to be rebirthed and reborn. So um, do reach out. I would love to get in touch with you and share more insight with you. Um, I have a lot of Gemini energy, so I love to share and exchange and hear and perceive. So uh, do get in touch. Thank you so much for listening, for being um, involved with this seminar, this class. Uh, here's a bunch of my details. I may as well use this time to share my offerings with you. Thank you so much. Um, you've got my email there, danielle at 12thspace.com, my Instagram. Um, again, you can join my newsletter um, or my WhatsApp broadcast list as well. There's also my YouTube channel, Danielle Donnelly Smith. Check out some of my little clips and videos that I share there. Upcoming events, there is the full moon eclipse, partial eclipse coming up uh, this Friday, the 5th of June. Again, I'm offering a very similar uh, webinar, online Zoom event, just like this on Friday. You can watch it live or you can watch the recording. On the 20th of June, we have the summer solstice. And then the following day on the 21st, we have the solar eclipse. Um, I'll be doing an event for that. And then on the 3rd of July, we have the full moon eclipse, again, a partial eclipse, kind of acting as the closing of this gateway. Um, I really recommend, you know, either if you're not going to join me, align with these um, solar and lunar events. The three of them combined are huge. The three of them combined now with this Venus energy are big. <laughs> move with it consciously. I would love to share my offerings with you, to share this astrological, esoteric energy with you, um, to assist us collectively moving through this conscious um, awakening. Uh, so I'll be back in London in two weeks time. So um, once I've, I've found my feet and settled, I will be looking to find new locations uh, to share cacao events, to share embodiment events uh, and in-person events as well. So keep in touch with me if you live in London. I look forward to returning and sharing my offerings there in person. Um, I will still be doing my online events as the year plays out. So those of you that from Ireland in particular that are still with me and my Algarve Portuguese tribe here. I am really looking forward to remaining in contact with you as I keep up these online events. That's one thing that's really good about this uh, COVID um, lockdown period is I've really kind of embraced the online events and put greater structure to it. So I'm really happy to be able to keep these up uh, so that we can stay in touch and create this uh, etheric online community. Um, I will be also, uh, those that know me from London, I um, normally always uh, teach pregnancy yoga, active birth and postnatal mum and baby yoga. Um, I will be returning to that same scene again, probably a little bit more as an online presence, um, mainly due to my own uh, impending um, preg birth pregnancy. Um, so I will be creating, uh, very shortly, I'll be sharing with you the Empowered Birth, Pregnancy and Birth Online um, course, which will have a combination of my yoga classes that I share with uh, prenatal yoga and that I share with women and equally the uh, active birth workshop that empowers parents or mother and birth partner to um, journey through this massive transformative process of becoming a mother, becoming a parent. Um, so I will share all of that through a beautiful online course coming up in the next few weeks. So looking forward to sharing that with you. Those that are pregnant or know someone that is pregnant, I highly recommend you connect with me really soon. I will be sharing a soul grounding ceremony 
this is on the 120th day after conception where you connect with the soul of the baby <laughs> you anchor that beautiful soul that is ready to come in and be embodied within you in your womb so i'll be sharing my uh, 120th day soul grounding ceremony with you next week um, and i invite you to come and enjoy that ceremony with me uh, even if it's your friend that's going through it perhaps you'd like to learn a little bit more so that you can offer it as a ceremony for your friend for that for the mother to be thank you so much for taking part in this beautiful venus sun conjunction uh, seminar and workshop thank you for being present with me for listening to this transmission these words these feelings um, that i have shared with you through our internet space and internet connection thank you thank you thank you Please enjoy the guided journey, the guided meditation coming up next. Take some time to even pause the video, go to the toilet, drink your water, settle yourself, lie down for the uh, guided meditation, for the etheric journey. We are exiting the logical space. We are exiting the physical space and entering into an etheric space, a journey that I will take you to your extrasensory perceptions, a highly visual, highly sensorial, descriptive experience, so that you can infuse the crowning of Venus into your body. This is a coronation. So please enjoy the coronation experience, this crowning of your sacred heart. Thank you so much. Wonderful to journey with you. Thank you again. <laughs>